we like, well, like you, we like this direct visualization. You know, we like to take films. We do single molecule imaging in, in cells, but we do it with conventional like microscopy. That's why I know that these molecular structures, they're blurred out inside the cell because of the diffraction limit. So, so I've always sort of wanted sharp, you, you know that it actually can be pretty, pretty frustrating looking at these blurry images and just felt like, oh, this information is hidden there that I cannot see. And it gives a strong desire to really overcome that limit to see a clear molecular level picture of the cell. Yeah, so we develop uh, advanced imaging methods, bioimaging methods, to look at uh, uh, biological samples, especially to look at really tiny things. So you know that uh, our body are made of uh, lots of cells, and these are actually the fundamental units of life. And uh, within the cells are a lot of different kinds of molecules. And these are small, you know, really you could think of them as small machines that are there, you know, collectively function to give the cell its life. And these molecules, they're so tiny, they're like a nanometer sized, and they form very intricate interaction networks. And then together, give the cell its behavior in life. So we're really interested in understanding life at that molecular level. The molecules that we're interested in, that they're all kinds. And uh, you know, one of them is that we actually discovered a uh, brand new cellular structure that people didn't even know existed before. Uh, when we started to look at a molecule called actin inside the cell. So we looked into neurons to see what actin looked like. And we, dis we, di we discovered a really beautiful structure that people didn't see before, didn't know before. So these actins and then form these rings and they're ex exactly periodically spaced. You know, I was just awed by this beautiful biological structure that can have such a beautiful order. And then they're spaced by a distance that was actually below what we call the diffraction limit, 250 nanometer. So because of that, this kind of a ring structure and then this periodic spacing, it was completely wasn't known because if you use a typical conventional light microscopy, you just see a flat, smeary, no feature kind of a signal. Now we see these periodic rings connected by another molecule called spectrin. And when we discovered that, uh, you know, everybody was surprised. So people were saying, that, oh, you literally discovered a skeleton of the exons. And then after that, we actually see many more molecules on the structure of radio functions. Uh, so that was just one of the example of the things uh, that we look inside the cell and then what we can discover. And one thing that my uh, PhD advisor, uh, my postdoc advisor, Stephen Chu, he taught me one thing is that one day he said, uh, Yugi Bear, you know, this uh, famous uh, uh, baseball player, like to say these obvious things, but they're really, really insightful, when, even though it's obvious. And then one thing he said is that you can see a lot by just looking. That's what we do. We invent the methods, the imaging methods, so that you can see a lot by just looking.